upon logging in, you will land on this dashboard page, which shows you some quick actions, for example, sending reminders, recording payments, and adding utilities. More actions can be found on this more actions drop down. The next part is the statistics part, which shows you uh, the most important statistics for you, which are the total unpaid balances, the amount of money that has been paid this particular month, and occupancy summary. The other thing that is being shown here is this graph over here, which shows you a comparison between the total expected amount for a certain month versus the total payments that have been made that month. On our platform, the data is stored using the following structure. We have the property at the top, then the units inside the properties, and then the tenants inside the units. The system only allows for one tenant per unit. To add a property, click on the properties section on the left. Click on property slash unit. You can see the list of properties that you have already added here. If you have not, you will find this being empty. You can add a property by going to add the property on the top right. Add the property name. Let's call it video demo property. Uh, the number of units may be 25. Let's say it's in Nairobi. On clicking this show more button, you can view other fields that you can add uh, that are related to the property. For example, where it is, you can leave this empty. Uh, water rate, this is only for those who are charging for water. For example, a majority of our clients use 150 shillings per unit of water. Electricity rate, this is uh, for, for, the, for the majority of our clients, they use tokens, so you can leave this empty. Uh, M-Pesa pay bill or till number, this is only if you have one. Uh, rent payment penalty, uh, you can apply a rent payment penalty or for those who are late in paying rent by a certain day. Management fee, this is only for property managers. Uh, tax rate, uh, you can. this is only for informational purposes. We do not in any way work with the taxman. We can then add this property. Add it successfully. When you go back, you should be able to see this property. Uh, the next thing we need to do is adding a unit. On this same page, you can see the add unit button at the top right. Add unit. You can see uh, it asks you to select the property. We can select the property we've just added, video demo property. And then we can add a unit. Let's call it uh, VD1, maybe. That's the unit name, or, me, or even D1. Let's say D1. Rent amount, let's say it's 10,000 shilling rent. Whether it's occupied or not, you can uh, choose to select this or not. The system will automatically set it uh, whenever you add a tenant or not. Then you can add the unit. We can add another unit. You see it has already pre-selected the property. Let's say D2, uh, rent amount 10,000. Then we can add it also. Back. So when you come to this unit section at the top here, top left here, uh, you can select demo uh, video demo property. Then you can see the units that we have just added now. To add a tenant, we go to the tenants tab on the left. You can add a tenant by clicking on the add tenant at the top right. You can select the property you want to add them onto. Select the unit, then you can add their name, Inuta, Neno, and then the phone number, we can say something, maybe you can enter their phone number here, and then we can come here and you can add the deposits that they paid you when they came in, so rent, for example, 10,000, if they paid the rent deposit, if they paid uh, maybe electricity deposit or, or, or water deposit, maybe 2,000 shillings, you can add it here. You can, uh, this account number field will be defaulted to the house number, so it will be D1. This is used for payment reconciliations, automatic reconciliation. Uh, national ID number, you can add it here. Their email, notes, you can add the notes here. For example, if someone plays loud music, you can add it here. Move in date, move out date, you can add them here. You can select the dates if you have them. Uh, other phone numbers, you can add up to six phone numbers per tenant. Uh, file upload, you can upload a lease agreement here if you want to also. So let's add a tenant. So tenant added successfully. You can go back. So And if we check now under our property here, video demo, we can see that the tenant has been added successfully. Other things that we can do on this page are uh, filtering by balances. Uh, you can filter, you can tell it to give you tenants who have balances between this amount and this amount. You can filter by archived tenants. Archived tenants are those that have been deleted. Their data will still be kept here. Okay. 
So another thing you can do is that you can filter by those whose lease, leases are expiring within 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days. Uh, you can send reminders in bulk at the top right here. You can, by clicking on it, you can see that it asks you to select the property. You can actually select all the properties here, like this, and you send reminders like this. When you click on this send reminders button, everybody who has a balance in this property or in all your properties that you select there, get a message. The other things that you can do, you can send custom messages, for example, Happy New Year to the whole property or to specific tenants. Uh, adding an invoice you can add an invoice to a tenant adding a payment or shifting a tenant you can shift a tenant from one unit to another if there are those tenants who like moving from one unit to another within the same property you can shift them from here and all their data will still be maintained under the specific tenant account here you can see that we have a balance column when you click on this balance column it opens up the transactions for that particular tenant for example it shows you the total deposit that the tenant paid it shows you the current balance here so there are two things that impact the balance of a, of a tenant, a bill or an invoice and a payment on another side. Let's add invoices and payments uh, just for demonstration purposes. Let's add, uh, uh, let's say, a rent invoice for April. So I've just clicked on add invoice. You can see that it has already pre-selected the tenant details. You can see it's a rent invoice or bill for, uh, let's say, April. So for example, let's say it's 10,000. Description, you can leave it empty. You can see the date is already selected there. Let's say add. Okay. Ideally, this be this invoicing of rent every month is going to be happening automatically. This is just for demo purposes. So let's click back. You can see now that after we are, we have added the, the invoice, their balance is now ten thousand shillings. Now let's add a payment for them. Let's see. Let's add a payment of nine thousand. So their balance should be one thousand. Let's see. If that's the case go back we have added the payment you can see their balance is now 1000 you can see that it has listed those transactions down here the invoices the invoice and the payment here let's add another invoice so maybe just so that you, so that you can see what happens let's add another invoice here let's say it's for water and it's for maybe uh, uh, 1000 shillings and uh, let's see let's add it you will see that it combines the water and the rent inside one the same inside one invoice so when you click on this invoice here the rent invoice that we had added earlier and the water invoice that we have just added get combined into one and that happens with uh, if you let the if you if you leave this checkbox here ticked this checkbox says combine with other invoices so what it will do it will combine invoices that are within one month okay um, now that is how we get to calculate the tenant balance using their bills and their payments on the other side. Let's add another payments, maybe so another payment so that maybe you can see how it affects the balance. Let's add a payment. Let's say they paid 500 shillings on some day. Uh, maybe they paid it uh, even today. It's okay, no problem. Let's say add. So you can see it listed that payment after this one. Okay, so uh, and that is. We had this invoice here, 11,000, and then a payment came in of 9,000, another payment of 9,000, and th this is the now the end of day balance, which is the same as the one up here. So this is how we calculate the balances using the invoices and payments. Another thing you can see under this more actions button here, you can send them a reminder from here. You can send them their tenant statement, which is basically this list of transactions. You can send them a custom message. You can download a tenant statement for them. You can also send them send them this receipt here uh, for the payment and they will also receive it as an sms you can also download it yourself for you to look at it for example let's download this receipt and look at how the receipt looks like uh, so this is how the receipt looks like you can see the company name here your logo here and uh, your company information here uh, paid by then the tenant information is here for this particular item and the amount and their current balance is also shown here so they will receive it in this format but as a link which is which they can click on and download their receipt